Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Martin McLeish. I'm a barrister at Cloisters Chambers. I was called to the bar in 1997, which I think makes me a senior junior. At least that's what people call me. Certainly does. Um, I, apart from being in Cloisters and practicing exclusively in clinical negligence and personal injury law, almost entirely for claimants, um, I'm also a member of the Bar Council Conditional Fee Agreement Panel and I'm also a member of the Executive Committee of the Personal Injury Bar Association. Um, I'm also a member of uh, the Chamber's Pupillage Committee uh, until the end of next week. Um, so this is my final outing on their behalf. Um, let me just um, tell you a few things about cloisters and about pupillage in uh, cloisters. Um, uh, cloisters is about 45 tenants. Uh, the two main areas of practice are employment and personal injury clinical negligence, which means that when you do a 12 month pupillage with us, the way in which it's divided up is you do basically six months of personal injury and clinical negligence with two designated uh, pupil masters over three months uh, and two months, uh, sorry, two, three months uh, periods with an employment uh, practitioner. I am a pupil master and I've so far had um, two uh, pupils. Uh, clinical negligence and personal injury pupillage uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, it depends really when you come. If you come in your first um, six, uh, basically the way in which your pupillage will be structured is that what we try and achieve is to give you as much time to get uh, familiarity um, with the basics of uh, personal injury, clinical negligence, pleading, uh, drafting advices uh, 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 and paperwork practice. You'll also see case management conferences. I think the, the biggest point to make probably about that exclusive kind of personal injury clinical negligence practice is that trials, particularly when you reach my kind of level of age and decrepitude, uh, are fairly few and far between. You don't see very many. Um, most cases settle. I mean, the figure which is used is usually about 95% of cases settle. So it's difficult to see trial work. So certainly in my chambers, what we try and do is get you into court with junior tenants as much as you possibly can to see what it's like on the ground, as it were, to, to see what trials are like. The way in which um, our um, tenancy process works is that when you're in, uh, towards the end of your uh, third three-month seat, you have a series of assessments, uh, drafting, advisory work, an interview and an advocacy test. And the way in which we approach pupillage is that we approach pupillage as a training. Our job as your pupil supervisors is to get you the highest marks you can possibly get in those assessments, which are objectively uh, assessed. And if you are do well in them, then we fully anticipate and expect that you will get uh, tenancy. Over the last three years, we've had five tenants uh, uh, that have been selected out of uh, five pupils, which is a 100% record, which is pretty good. We've got two pupils at the moment. I'm highly hopeful that they will fall into that category as well. We take on two pupils um, uh, a year, and as I'm sure you know, the competition for pupillage is extraordinarily uh, competitive and very uh, uh, difficult indeed. We get about, we're in what was all pass and has now changed its name to something which I can't remember. I think it's the pupillage portal. Or the pupillage portal, the yeah. Gateway. Gateway. The gateway, I think it is. Yeah, we're, we're on that. So we get about 300 applications for pupillage and we whittle it down to about 60 who come for a first round interview and then to 20 uh, who come for second round interview and then two people will be selected out of that group. Um, uh, so I fully appreciate where you were. Although I was called to the bar in 1997, I was one sitting in your um, shoes. I know what it's like. The competition speak, is tough. Speak, speak. Sorry, uh, I know what it's like. The competition is tough, but um, uh, once you get there, it is rewarding. I'm sure we go on to talk about that. Shall I move over to Jesse then? Uh, thank you. So I'm Jesse Crozier. I'm a barrister at Devereux Chambers, and I've been a tenant there for about a year and a half. So I am by a long way the most junior uh, practitioner on, on this side of the table. Uh, on listening to Martin describe uh, the pupillage process at Cloisters, it sounds remarkably similar to ours. Uh, in particular, uh, the emphasis on you seeing the range of work that Chambers does and also on the uh, duty on 
Chambers is holding on pupil supervisors to make sure that you're in the best position possible to get tenancy. We very much take the same approach. I won't say any more uh, about our pupillage process uh, because I think uh, if you want to know more about that, please come and see us on the stand. Um, what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about my practice, uh, my PI practice and, and my practice more generally, uh, and also describe to you some of the skills that I think you need to succeed at the bar in particular as a personal injury or clinical negligence barrister. And I'll say now, if you can emphasize the skills and the practical skills in applications for mini pupillage or pupillage, uh, it will certainly go down very well. So what does my practice look like? I am pretty much equally split between employment work, personal injury work, and a bit of commercial work, um, with a tiny bit of tax on the side. Uh, Almost all of my personal injury work is uh, for claimants. Uh, I occasionally get a, a defendant brief, but it's, it's uh, certainly rare. And within my personal injury practice, probably the majority of it is employer's liability cases, uh, quite a lot of road traffic accidents and the like, and other odd cases that uh, come, to, come to light every now and then. Rather unusually for a very junior personal injury barrister, I am not. I don't spend that much time uh, going up and down the country doing uh, small claim road traffic accidents uh, and things like that. Some of my colleagues at other chambers do. For some reason, uh, my practice is far more paper-based. Uh, but certainly, one thing, if you're interested in applying to for personal injury pupillages, is to find out what sort of work uh, very junior barristers do. Uh, Certainly in my chambers, uh, the majority of uh, getting on your feet advocacy in the first few years is achieved through employment work. So uh, that's the vast majority of my, my advocacy. So the skills you need to achieve, uh, to achieve pupillage uh, and succeed at the bar, uh, I'd like to emphasize a few. You will have been told at great length the high academic qualifications you'll need and the analytical skills that you need uh, but that's just uh, a base if you like um, one example one one thing that really brought this home to me is I was doing first round pupillage interviews last year and we had uh, a fellow of New College Oxford uh, who come for a first round interview very 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 bright uh, but he simply did not demonstrate the practical skills that, that uh, and the uh, the ability to apply a very good brain to a particular set of problems. So it, it's not just about having those skills. The one thing I would emphasize above anything else is decisiveness and judgment. You have to be able to make a call about whether a case is a good case or a bad case, whether it's got legs or not, whether an offer is a good offer or a bad offer, and you've got to be able to stick to your guns. And sometimes you've got to be able to do that under some pressure before a judge uh, and in court. So you have to be able to take decisions. Uh, and we all like to hope that mo at least most of the time we get them right. The job is also ultimately about practicalities. It's not about uh, esoteric points of law, although as interesting as they may be and as important as they may be to a case, uh, what the job is really about is what your client wants, what your client can get, and how to match those two as best as possible. Uh, and certainly in making pupillage applications and throughout pupillage, an emphasis on the practical is always incredibly important and will impress. The other thing I particularly like about my PI practice, and I think the same goes for my employment practice, is the emphasis on people skills. In personal injury cases, particularly where you're acting for a claimant, you are acting for people who are, uh, by definition, injured, uh, often continuing to suffer from the, the consequences of a particular injury. There is often a lot of uh, ill feeling around. There is a lot of managing expectations and explaining to your client what they can get out of litigation and what they can't, and what you can achieve for them frankly what you can't. Uh, I really enjoy that part of the job. I really enjoy uh, meeting my clients in conference uh, and being able to uh, sympathize with them and talk to them about what we can achieve for them and what we can't and you have to be able to develop those relationships. 
the other thing, the, the, the final skill I'd like to point out is, well, two skills. First of all, written advocacy, which is often overlooked uh, by people applying to the bar. You have to be able to get a point across in a persuasive way on paper. It's not always on your feet. Uh, and if those written skills are incredibly important. And one of the things that you look for in going through pupillage application forms is, is this person a, uh, someone who can communicate persuasively on paper? Often it's a lot easier to do it uh, face to face, but can this person do it on paper? And finally, and it goes for uh, my personal injury practice and my employment practice, it's incredibly important to have witness handling skills. Now, the first part of that is the analytical skills, judgment. Second part of that is people skills, but you have to be able to uh, deal with live witnesses. And that is by far the most difficult thing about the job. Um, so any skills that you can pick up in witness handling through uh, the FRU or through, through mock trials and whatever, incredibly important. Um, I have probably spoken for too long, but I'd just like to speak very, very briefly about the practicalities of the job. Uh, a lot of people are excited about the fact that uh, you get to be self-employed. Uh, there are two sides to that. There are days when I don't have all that much to do and I can sleep in late and go home early and all the rest of it. Uh, far more of the time, it's not that I'm self-employed, it's that I'm in effectively employed by many different solicitors on many different cases and they all want my time all of the time. Uh, it can be a very demanding job, uh, there can be no doubt about that, but the rewards in terms of uh, uh, achieving what uh, a good outcome for your client are uh, at times incredible. Uh, the money isn't bad either, um, and certainly if you are able to develop a practice in PI or across, across the board, uh, you will uh, you will have a very rewarding career. Uh, I think I've probably spoken for long enough. Um, good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Dixie. Um, I'm very tempted to say I agree entirely with what you've just heard from both <laughs> of the speakers and leave it at that, but I'll try and add something. Um, I am a barrister at 506 Court. I was called in 2007 and have been in practice for um, approaching five years. But 506 Court is predominantly known for police law. Um, that includes a, a wide range of cases from police PI cases, so dog bites through to um, deaths involving um, high-speed chases, um, and includes a whole range of other work as well, inquests, inquiries, um, civil actions against the police, public law matters. Um, I also practice in employment and public law generally. Um, Chambers has 37 members, six silks, and um, I'm a member of the pupillage committee, so I may be able to answer some questions if you, if you have any at the end. Um, we, we take on a maximum of two pupils a year, and um, uh, as the retention rate was mentioned a little earlier, <laughs> I will add that over six years we have taken on all of our pupils as tenants. Um, we recruit with a view to do tenancy. Um, there's a detailed feedback on last year's application process on our website if you wanted to um, have a, an insight into our, our process. Um, in terms of deciding where to apply to, uh, there'll be a number of things that you'll be considering. Um, one of them is, is potentially the range of cases that you'll be involved in. And one of the things that I certainly enjoy about my practice and, and the chambers that I'm at is that there is a, it, there is a wide range. It, it may not be a traditional common law set in that we are slightly more focused than that, but th there is a range of work and, and PI is, is a large component of that. As I say, the PI ranges from the relatively straightforward slipping and tripping type case through to the more um, complicated cases um, which uh, might be slightly more taxing um, uh, but for, for that all the more rewarding. Um, my, my practice as I say encompasses a range of areas and um, PI being um, one of them. Um, certainly my practice is probably predominantly for defendants in PI cases, um, although as Jesse was saying, there's a, there's a relatively large amount of um, claimant uh, work and, and, and I um, do a fair amount of claimant paperwork. Um, why you might do personal injury, uh, I'm not here as a salesperson for the PI bar, but some of the things that it seems to me are are good things about a PI practice. Firstly, there's a healthy mix of paperwork and court experience. And that means there can be quite a nice balance between traveling to the far ends of the country um, and having the occasional day in chambers drafting um, paperwork. 
there is a lot of travel to glamorous locations uh, and more often less glamorous locations. But um, if you enjoy trains and traveling, uh, which I don't tend to, but if you do, then <coughs> PI is definitely an area that you may wish to consider uh, very seriously. There's also the range of cases as well. Um, from, as I say, the, the, the more straightforward matters to um, a case that I was involved in at a relatively junior stage, I think I may have been in my second six or, or possibly first year of tenancy, was being a junior in a, in a lead case where um, it involved, a, a, I think, possibly a multi-million pound stress at work claim by a former civil servant. Um, that, that's the type of case that, that, that one can get involved in. In the cases that uh, one does at the PI bar, there can be a considerable amount of ownership of the case, and, and that's so it even at the, the relatively junior end. So it means that you can be involved in a case in framing it and forming it in a way from a, a relatively early stage, identifying the weaknesses, uh, and if there are significant weaknesses, hopefully settling the case as soon as possible. You also see all walks of life. Um, uh, I'll probably leave it at that and be diplomatic about it. Um, <laughs> client handling is, is a, a very important skill because you're going to be dealing with your professional client and the, the lay client um, who may be uh, simply unfortunate in tripping over on um, a, a broken curbstone. Um, so you will see all manner of people from all walks of life. PI also brings a quite a nice mix of, um, of law, of fact, of procedure, of costs. So to that extent, it's a very good, um, I don't want to say introduction, because it's, it's, a, it's a practice that, that um, you will, I'm sure, um, wish to retain. But it is very good for hitting all of the areas at an early stage and getting an idea of the, the types of issues that crop up in, in other areas of law as well. And it can lead to other areas. Inquests um, is, is one area that I do quite a lot of work in, in, and very often acting for families in inquests, that will then lead on to um, a, a civil claim, a personal injury claim. There is, if I can have one moment of slight pomposity, um, there, is, there is a social value to PI work. Um, it's not all grubby ambulance chasing. Um, in the absence of compensation for um, victims of horrendous accidents, there, there is, there is um, a social value to it, which um, is, is sometimes masked by some of the adverts on the television if you've had an accident and so forth. So it, it's not all cold-hearted ambulance chasers. Um, <clears throat> the caveat to all of that, though, um, as hopefully you'll all be aware, on the 1st of April things will change considerably, um, certainly in terms of costs, and the commercial side of PI will change considerably um, on the 1st of April. Uh, it may be that the collective wisdom um, up here, and I exclude myself from that, may know um, exactly what the future is, is going to hold, but I think the general consensus is that we are in a state of flux, and so PI cases when possibly you might be on your feet, hopefully, um, it, it might be very different to how it is today. Um, so I think it it's, would be well advised, certainly for interviews, to be aware of the kind of reforms that are um, in, the, in the immediate pipeline and which will be coming into effect come the summer when you'll be um, in front of pupillage interview panels if you apply this, this year. Um, I, I don't think I can add anything more to what has been said. Um, so I'll leave it there.